but I was highly strong. But the one thing I do remember, I could not concentrate. And I remember I could be reading a book and even though I would be looking at the page, my eyes were directed towards the page, but my attention was stuck in my head. And I'd get to the, towards the end of the page. I wouldn't know any of the content. I would have to start over again. Now, can you think that we are sending kids to school, to university, out into the, the working world? We are demanding that these people can concentrate and that these kids are able to concentrate. We are not teaching them how. And I'm going to say this, and this is not um, you know, a criticism of mindfulness. Mindfulness will not address respiratory physiology. If you have an individual and if their physiology is in that fight or flight, if you want to use mindfulness to change that, you will have to be literally up in the mountain eight hours a day, 10 hours a day meditating. Mm -hmm. Breathing is the quick route into it. You have to get right to the source. And when people come into my door with panic disorder, we give them different breathing techniques. And I have made plenty of mistakes. I've put one guy into A&E as a result of doing breathing exercises for panic. I've had people coming in with chronic fatigue syndrome. I've completely floored them. They wouldn't come back to me. So I've made mistakes, and but I've learned over the years. And I've learned as well that sometimes we have to take a nice, gentle approach. The other thing I've learned is that we can't always expect one breathing exercise to suit all. It doesn't work that way. That's the way it yeah, is. That, that's, that's a really, really interesting point. And as you're talking through the the... Because I'm a huge advocate of mindfulness. But what you're talking about is also what I, where I bolt on breath work with it is because as an athlete, let's just take athletes, for example, and I use my own example of when I had one of my first debuts as a, um, as a young kid, well, I was 21, and it was on Sky Sports, thousands of people in, in the stadium, people at home watching, families in the crowd, my brother's in the crowd, like everyone knew I was playing that game. And... I had an incredible stress response to that game. I knew I was ne- I knew I was anxious before the game. I knew I was nervous. Had seen the psychologist, asked for some advice. His advice was accept the nerves in a more psychological way. But I remember the response physically on the on the day, mm-hmm. and that was that I was incredible heart rate. Sh- my breathing would have been shallow. Yeah. I was all over the place. I, like eye direction was all over the place. There was no attention or focus on the task at hand and especially to the game plan that would require a logical brain and a less emotional brain to to take hold. And I, it was a train crash. Like it was awful. Yeah. It, was, it yeah. was an incredibly bad response. But I look at now when teaching things like mindfulness, it's no point even directing people to the breath without them having an understanding of how they're breathing and understanding yeah. the the mechanics of it and what to feel. And, and even if it's just pure diaphragmatic breathing and just understanding that to begin with, and then you can bolt on breathing in and out through the nose if it then becomes comfortable. And then adding on that mindfulness element to it, which is right now you feel calm in the physiological response to what you're doing. Now we can actually start to access how you maybe start to look at the mind think of where the thoughts are at and then go into that mindfulness zone but you're totally right you probably cannot access that no you can't access that if you're in a stressed response physically because the mind responds to the body and the body responds to the mind so it's going to be a complete cyclical impact um 